how long can you be in a calorie deficit? How long should your diet last for to stay in a calorie deficit for too long? Yeah, fucking right you can. <laughs> Are these bloopers? Yep. Oh man. Is it where you want me to stand? Yes. <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's give it a shot. <clears throat> oh yeah. Today we got Bamba. It's a peanut butter and it's good for, you know, the hummus. Okay. <laughs> ready? Yeah. We rolling? Rolling. Sound good? Sounds great. Shoulders look good too. Yeah, right. I haven't lifted since 2004. <laughs> I thought you were saying I really like anal. No, I didn't say that. What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today, you and I are going to talk about how long should you stay in a calorie deficit. Before we begin, two quick things. I got engaged yesterday, which I'm super excited about. Rico, behind the camera, took amazing pictures, so we'll just put them up all over the screen. Really excited about it and I wanted to share with you. So, and if you were commenting on my Instagram post or my stories, thank you for your congratulations and your support. It really meant a lot to me. So with that out of the way, second thing is, if you still have not signed up for my 101 metabolic workouts, they're free. Completely free, you can grab them at the link in the description. 101 metabolic workouts, you sign up, I send it to you in an email, You'll be on my email list after that, but if you hate my emails or don't like me, then you just unsubscribe and you won't ever get them again. All right, so all that out of the way, let's get to the topic at hand. How long can you stay in a calorie deficit for? All right, so the last video that I posted on YouTube is called, How Do You Know If You're Eating Too Little? Which by the way, got a great response. Thank you for that. And if you didn't watch it, go watch it. We'll put the link in the description. In the last video, we did sort of hieroglyphics. So you sort of had to guess as we went along with the video. This time we're not doing hieroglyphics, we're sort of doing a fill in the blank, all right? So the question that we're asking is, how long should you stay in a calorie deficit? But when you're asking that question, that question is predicated on the question of, is it possible to stay in a calorie deficit for too long? And the answer to that is yes. You can absolutely stay in a calorie deficit for too long, but as you can see, it depends on a lot of factors. So let's get into those. So the first thing this depends on is how much body fat you're starting with. If you have a lot of body fat to lose and you're starting out with a very high body fat percentage, then you're gonna be able to stay in a calorie deficit for longer with very limited, if any, negative side effects as a result of it. On the other hand, if you're already starting out very lean, or even not very lean, but relatively lean, then you're probably gonna to have to take some diet breaks along the way, maybe have some refeeds, maybe do some reverse dieting, and we'll get into that later, just because the leaner you are, the more likelihood, the more chance you have of other issues as a result of staying in a calorie deficit for too long. All right, so the next thing it depends on, and by the way, I think this is probably the most important thing. They all matter, but I think this is probably the most significant and most important of all of them is how steep of a calorie deficit you're in. And what I mean by that is, are you eating very, very, very few calories or are you eating as many calories as you can to still maintain a calorie deficit? So a small calorie deficit, which is more sustainable long-term or a very steep calorie deficit, which is more difficult to sustain long-term, right? So if you're in a very steep calorie deficit, more difficult to sustain long-term, that's more of a rapid fat loss protocol. And there are many ways to do this. I do not recommend it for most people if you want to learn more about rapid fat loss, how you might be able to use it, I have a link in the description that will show you my video on that. Again, I do not recommend it for most people, but if you want to learn more about it, go check out the link in my description. So one hand, rapid fat loss. And obviously, if you're doing a rapid fat loss protocol or eating very, very, very few calories, you're not gonna be able to sustain that for very long. And if you try to sustain it for very long, it's a really stupid idea. There's no reason to eat very few calories for a very long period of time. It's gonna to lead to binge eating, it's gonna to lead to disordered eating, it's gonna to lead to terrible habits, terrible relationship with food, and not to mention, physiologically, you're probably gonna lose muscle mass, you're gonna have some serious metabolic adaptation, it's just not gonna be a good experience overall. So if you're going to do a rapid fat loss protocol, which again, I do not recommend for most people, it should not be for a very long period of time. On the other hand, if you're doing something more sustainable, slower, something like in my calorie calculator, which is 100% free, I have another video. Let's say you want to know how many calories you need to eat to be in a calorie deficit, but you don't know where to begin. I have a link in the description to my calorie calculator. It's another video here on YouTube. It will tell you exactly how many calories you need for a more sustainable, slower rate of fat loss. That's something you can sustain for a longer period of time. And again, it's gonna go back up to number one, how much body fat you have. 
So that number, if you have a very, very high body fat percentage, you're gonna be able to sustain that number, that calorie deficit for a significantly longer period of time. Could be months, months on months on months. But if you are already relatively lean, it doesn't have to be super lean, you don't have to be shredded, but already relatively lean, then maybe it'll be four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks before you need to make a change. All right, so the next one, and I know I said this is probably the most important, but now I think about it, they're all really, really important. This one's important, especially for people, if you struggle with being honest with yourself, you have to ask yourself, how strict are you being with your calorie deficit? It depends on how strict you are being with your calorie deficit. If you're legitimately on point, weighing and measuring your food, you're tracking everything, even Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, you're on point and you're in your calorie deficit every single day, you're not gonna be able to sustain a calorie deficit for as long as someone who is being a little bit more flexible with it, as someone who maybe isn't tracking as seriously or as meticulously. A lot of people get really frustrated. They'll be like, I've been dieting for years. It's like, I mean, maybe you've been in a dieting mindset for years, but you haven't actually been dieting for years. You haven't actually been in a calorie deficit for years. Because if you've been in a calorie deficit for years, then you'd be nothing. You can't be in a calorie deficit for years. It's impossible. You'll literally go into nothing. And it'd be very unhealthy if you do that for years on years on years. Most people are in a mindset of dieting constantly. They always want to lose weight. They always want to lose weight. They always want to lose fat. They always want to lose the love handles. They always want to lose this, lose that, whatever. They're constantly thinking about it, but they're not really being as strict as they think they are. They're letting things slip. They have these licks, bites, and tastes. Taking a snack here, taking a bite here, drinking here. On the weekends, they're not being as strict as they think they are. So they're always thinking they're doing it, but they're not. So if you're being super strict, super rigid, on point, you're not gonna be able to sustain it for as long. On the other hand, if you're sort of letting it go and being loosey-goosey with it and very lackadaisical, that's fine, but it might take you significantly longer to get to a point in which you're like, cool, I've reached my goal. All right, so the next thing it depends on is whether or not you're using things like refeeds, reverse dieting, or diet breaks. Now, I'll say this from the forefront. If you don't know how to use reverse dieting or you don't know how to take diet breaks, I have two separate videos. I very strongly encourage you to watch both of them. They're very informational. So the links are in the description, how to structure your reverse diet, and also why you should take diet breaks and how to do it. Now, the reason this is important is because sort of like the last one, like how strict are you being with it? If you're doing refeeds, if you're taking diet breaks, if you're doing reverse dieting, then you're going through periods of time in which you're actually increasing your calories, oftentimes out of a calorie deficit. Now, I actually really like this approach. I like this approach in terms of you're in a calorie deficit for could be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is, followed by a period of time in which you go, you increase your calories, maybe more towards maintenance. You maintain that for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, eight weeks, whatever you want, then you go back into a calorie deficit. So instead of the line looking like, I don't know why I just took the cap off to draw on literally nothing, but the line could literally look like more like this in terms of you're always in a calorie deficit. That's not what your weight loss is gonna look like, but you're just always in a calorie deficit. Or you could go down, maintain, down, maintain, down, maintain, a little bit more like a staircase. I prefer that staircase approach. For me, it's more sustainable long-term. For me, you can do that over the long-term without much, if any, negative side effects. Whereas if you're trying to be in a calorie deficit nonstop for six months, it's gonna be awful, right? I see people try and do this all the time. Like, I'm just gonna go in a calorie deficit for six months straight. I'm like, it's a really stupid idea. And again, it depends on how much body fat you have, right? That's a huge component of it. If you have a lot of body fat to lose, then you could probably be in a calorie deficit for six months and be okay. But if you're already relatively lean, you wanna lose 15, 20, 30 pounds, trying to be in a calorie deficit nonstop might sound like a good idea because in your mind you're like, I'm gonna reach this goal faster, but in practice, it becomes completely and utterly unsustainable. And so then we go back to the original question of how long should you be in a calorie deficit for? Well, you could technically, theoretically, be on a calorie deficit for six months, maybe. But is it practical? Is it gonna work? Maybe you'll be better being a calorie, in a calorie deficit for four weeks straight, maintenance for two weeks. Four weeks calorie deficit, two weeks maintenance. Four weeks deficit, two weeks maintenance, right? So it takes longer, but you have these staggered periods of time where you increase your calories. You're not actually in a calorie deficit anymore. You get mental rejuvenation, you feel better, your lifts feel better, you have more energy, more libido, all of the benefits of not being in a calorie deficit, and you have that staggered throughout. So then when you actually go back to a calorie deficit, you can be more consistent with it. 
All right, now I know I've said this about literally every single one, but now maybe this one might be the most important one, which is it depends on your relationship with food. Someone might say, how long should I be in a calorie deficit for? But maybe that person has a terrible relationship with food. Maybe they are a recovering anorexic. Maybe they're recovering from binge eating. Maybe they're, they're just not in a good mindset to actually successfully and healthily lose fat then the answer to the question of how long they should be in a calorie deficit for is zero minutes. They should not do it at all until they've developed a healthy relationship with food. This is so critically important to understand. If you don't have a healthy relationship with food, going into a calorie deficit is probably gonna do more harm than good. And when I say probably, I mean definitively. It is not a good idea. If you have a healthy relationship with food, if you've worked on that, if you've developed it, or if you're just lucky enough to have a very healthy relationship with food to begin with, then you can go into a calorie deficit and probably sustain it for a longer period of time. On the other hand, if you are really struggling with body image, with your relationship with food, probably best to work on that first before you go into a calorie deficit. Then once you build that up, I've found for people who struggled with binge eating, disordered eating, anorexia, bulimia, people who've struggled with that in the past, but then built up a healthy relationship with food, for them it's better to number one, never do rapid fat loss protocols, very stupid idea, but number two, to really structure these periods of brief calorie deficit followed by maintenance. Calorie deficit, maintenance. Calorie deficit, maintenance. Oftentimes, two to four weeks in a calorie deficit and two to four weeks in maintenance. These short periods like that give you enough time to number one, be consistent, number two, make progress, and number, two, number three, to reevaluate your mentality. If you're one and a half, two weeks into a calorie deficit and you can feel bad habits, bad emotions really starting to crop up, then you stop. You immediately stop. It's not worth the risk. Mental health comes first, always. So if you have a struggle, struggling relationship with food, I'd really evaluate whether or not you should even begin with a calorie deficit or you should first start improving that relationship with food. All right, on the other hand, if you have a great relationship with food or you've built that up from the very beginning and you feel comfortable with going to a calorie deficit, you have more leeway with how long of a time you can spend in it. All right, so with all that said, two quick notes. Number one, I just finished my own mini cut. I lost 10 pounds in 10 weeks, super slow, but very sustainable and enjoyable. I had wine three to four nights a week, which a lot of people ask me like, is it possible to lose fat while you're drinking alcohol? Yes, it is. I just did it. I'm gonna make an entire YouTube video about that. All right, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. And also for the second note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, Thumbs up, again, subscribe if you don't already. Have a wonderful day, I'll talk to you soon.